I'm going to back up and actually drive into the field of view. That license plate is illuminated excellently. Hey guys, we're out here at my house on a beautiful fall-like day and we are going to attempt to get this LPR camera set up for both daytime and nighttime viewing. Um, now it's real easy to get it set up for daytime viewing, but to get it set up well for both daytime and nighttime viewing takes a little bit of configuration. The big thing at night is there's a few things you gotta consider. Number one, the tail lights and or the headlights could blind out the license plate if you don't have the settings set up properly. Also, you have to worry about um, shutter speed. If the shutter's too slow, you're gonna have motion blur. You also gotta get the infrared settings set up properly. You know, you wanna make sure the infrared's strong enough to illuminate the plate if needed. And um, there's also going to be a focus shift sometimes um, when it goes from daytime to nighttime, the IR filter slides out of the way and it actually shifts the focus just a little bit. You probably don't see it on your normal cameras because it's, it's uh, you have wide shots on your normal cameras, but you might see it more prevalent on a license plate camera when it's zoomed in on a license plate. So we are going to try to see what we can do to get it set up for both daytime and nighttime viewing um, without messing with it so, you know, like every day. So what I'm gonna do here is I got this license plate just set up here on this trash can and I got my uh, computer in here that's what it looks like right now I'm gonna go ahead and drive my truck out there and zoom in on the license plate so it's real nice and sharp okay got the truck parked out there it's approximately I don't know probably 60 feet or so maybe a little longer you'll see it actually already picked up my plate when I was driving out there but um, anyways, I got a good shot on that. I might center it a little better if I can. I'm gonna leave it parked out there and I'm gonna check back tonight to see what it looks like. Five hours later. All right, now it's fully dark outside. Actually got a full moon out, but it is fully dark. No more sunlight at all. There's my truck. You can't see it with this camera. But here is the LPR camera. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, we got the infrared lights on. And let's go take a look at the image. And it actually looks really good. Um, I did not make any adjustments. It's really sharp. It's getting a good, nice image of the license plate. But there's a few things we need to look at. Um, the tail lights, when those turn on. What's it gonna to do to the image? Is it gonna wash it out? Um, so far, so good. Let's, let's take a look at some things. Okay, there you see me running to my truck. About to get in, I just unlocked it. You can see the tail lights flash a little bit. And there you can see me getting in the truck. And there I'm starting it. And there I'm Pushing on the brakes, no problem at all. Zero blind out. It's like it's not even affected whatsoever. So it seems to be performing quite well with brake lights and tail lights, no problem at all. All right, so now what I wanna do is I'm gonna back up and actually drive into the field of view to see what it would look like under a normal nighttime scenario. I want to see if there's any motion blur or any any other issues we may occur. Okay, here I come into the field of view and that license plate is illuminated excellently by that infrared. And it looks really sharp as well, even at varying distances. I drove all the way out to that uh, my driveway and it still stayed a sharp image. So. It's performing really well. I'm really happy with this camera. Okay, so I'm curious to see if the headlights would blind out the license plate. So I took off the license plate from my wife's car and taped it to the front of my car. Um, so I'm gonna see if the headlights will um, blind this out. And specifically, I wanna see if the 
um, high beams will flood it out as well. So let's take a look. All right, so just got back to my computer and it looks like this is probably gonna work because it looks like I already got a capture right there. Um, and anyways, I got the, got it lined up real good, still real sharp. So let's record a video of what it's gonna look like when I turn on the headlights and the high beams. Come on, Sean, hurry up. All right, so I just unlocked the truck and got in. I think it's kind of unusual how the camera picks up the headlights, uh, like it, that blinking or whatever you want to call that. But anyways, here I am, I'm in the truck and the headlights are on. And so far, so good. Um, there, the high beams are on. Didn't seem to affect the license plate capture. There's my uh, turn signals, no problem. Wow, even with the high beams on, that super bright light, you're still able to pick up that license plate with no issues at all. That license plate just illuminates greatly. So even if you had license plates in the front of your car, this thing's gonna be able to pick it up no problem at all. Um, I'm very pleased. I'm actually quite amazed that that license plate didn't get blinded out. So I'm really pleased to see that this camera works great right out of the box. Didn't have to do any settings or any configuration to the settings. And as you can see, it captured that license, my license plate and read it just fine. Um, so that's awesome. Um, you know, some other plates uh, or the, the previous plate reader we carried in the past, we had to do a little bit of setup for nighttime viewing, but this one works great for day and night. So I'd recommend whenever you set this camera up, you know, park a car at the specific spot uh, where you think most captures are going to occur. Focus it in and do a daytime and a nighttime shot. Chances are the camera is going to pick up those license plates just fine right out of the box. Um, we can take a look at some of the settings, but like I said, you're likely not going to have to mess with any of these settings. Um, you can go to video and audio here. And there's quite a bit of settings here. We even tested this at the shop. Tyler has messed around with this camera a lot more than I have. And, um, you know, I played around with changing this exposure setting to like low motion blur and automatic and stuff. Um, but the, the default setting, which is custom, seems to be the best. Um, when I change it, we, we get a little bit more motion blur. We get blind out by the, uh, the tail lights. Um, and same thing with smart illumination. I've changed that a little bit. Or actually, I'm sorry, I changed the focus is what I did. There's some different settings. Um, by default, it comes to this one-click focus IR. I've changed it to autofocus and I've changed it to one-click focus locked. Again, the best setting seems to be the default setting. So that's good news for you. That means you don't have to do so many things right when you get this out of the box. Pretty much just got to set it up. Uh, or install it and zoom it into your choke point as much as possible and chances are your daytime and nighttime shots are going to be just fine. The only thing we changed is we increased the uh, frame rate to 60 frames per second. You may or may not need to do that. You typically need to do that on faster moving cars, but if you're going to have like slower moving cars, you probably don't need to do that. But I went ahead and did it anyways just because I like the way it looks. I hope you found this video helpful. If you want to know more about this camera, be sure to check out our other videos, and we also have a full blog post about it on our website. If you have any additional questions, reach out to us anytime, and we'll be happy to help.